So anarchism is basically a process whereby we eliminate all unjustifiable hierarchy. The main things would probably be uh, anti-capitalism, liberation of kind of all people. Also, as long as that doesn't conflict with, doesn't cause oppression to anyone else. It's the idea that we should create a world that doesn't have uh, positions of authority. Someone who who doesn't believe in and rejects and fights against hierarchy. No one is better to know what you need than yourself. It's about empowering the people to, to, to run their lives. Uh, philosophy you can attempt to live your life by, one by which you allow people as much freedom as possible. Getting rid of the barriers that separate men from women, that separate whites from people of colour. Look at um, class inequality or climate change or terrorism, it's all kind of in some way or another because of hierarchy and because of capitalism in some way. So I think that's the kind of key thing to get rid of. It doesn't make sense as a way to run a society unless you're one of the lucky few right at the top of it. We uh, want a revolution, but we want the revolution to be a mass thing from the working classes. Because if you look at it, okay, if every single worker in the world stopped working immediately, could capitalism continue? It would have to be worldwide. I think, like, UK will probably be one of the last places where revolution would happen. It's possible for there to be a global anarchist revolution and for the entire world to live in an anarchist system. But I think it's also ridiculous to say things could stay the way they are now without it being really horrible forever or without us destroying the planet. I mean, I think we live in some pretty crazy times. I don't think anyone would kind of refute that. There are times when I can just get really depressed and pissed off because, you know, nothing's happening. If we're going to kind of change anything in the world, it's going to start from the bottom up, learning with each other and helping each other and building kind of community and solidarity with with the people around you. Saying, hey, we can do something about this. We can make a world that works for us. AFED is Anarchist Federation. So it was set up 30 years ago. Uh, it's a anarchist communist group. We've got a Bristol group and there's groups throughout the UK. Um, so we have a, I hate using the word national, UK based one. And that in itself is part of an international group. So it's like good networking anarchists throughout the country, those in like isolated areas. Um, and it's really good at sort of like critiquing and developing theory. Cabelli is an anarchist social centre and anarchist experiment that's been going about 20 years now. It tends to operate as a useful hub of anarchist activity. It's got a lot of resources there. So it has like a library, which we're in at the moment. Um, it's also got like a therapy room, an arts room, so people could do like black arts and make art and stuff. It's got computers, it's got a big sort of commercial sized kitchen. So we do regular meals every Sunday, like normally a three course meal for like really cheap, like £2.50. I'll uh, cook there every couple of months and help clean uh, every now and then. Uh, there are people that put a lot more work in it to it than I do and I think sometimes less people than would be ideal because it's a really important resource. It's run as a cooperative. If there's something we want to do, we have a space to do it in. It also acts as a social hub. It's got weekly cafes and other social events that keep the different anarchists in Bristol connected to each other. It's been going really, really well and I've been finding new people that have been getting involved in anarchism every day and you know it just really makes me happy and really makes you know us think that you know this is going to happen someday you know we're going to get somewhere at least. Hydra is a cafe bookshop on Old Market, it's a radical bookshop. Now been in existence for five years. The original idea was that people wanted a space where radical literature could be handed out. Members of the public can come in and have coffee a lot of anarchists can hang out there as well. Like we regularly put on talks at Hydra. We've got a huge array of different events that go on there. I think uh, the thing Hydra Books does best in Bristol is it acts as a kind of shop window to anarchism and other radical politics in Bristol. That's why I find Hydra really important. It's a sort of first place of contact for people that are interested in anarchism or interested in other radical politics. Like Bristol's got a reputation 
for being uh, a place that's got a strong anarchist movement and that tends to be a self-fulfilling prophecy like a lot of anarchists especially from the west country will move to bristol because they say it's somewhere where things are going on and because they'll move here things go on i think bristol has a has a fairly healthy um radical or anarchist community and i and you, you always wish you could do more of it um, especially with anarchism because it is so much about community and about people working together. The ideal anarchist future has to be more of a recipe than a blueprint. It's something we can say, these are what we feel we need to make a really good society based on uh, the modern experiments you've had on a small scale and based on looking at larger historical societies. To create a world which everyone has their basic needs met to begin with. We all have control over where we work. We all have control of our house. We all have control over how things are managed and governed. There'd be, you know, no, there'd be no hierarchy and there'd be no kind of oppression of people for any reason or another. Everything would be done to what everyone needs. So if you need something, it'd be given to you. You won't be like struggling to find somewhere to live. Like instantly there's enough buildings in this country for everyone to live in. It's like in the States, there is enough, there's enough houses for every homeless person to have six houses. So it just seems like a massive waste. Like capital creates this waste because that keeps it, um, profits high. So getting rid of money. <laughs> and instantly from that, you get rid of a lot of crime because most people, crime comes from they're not able to get what they need. It would be up to the community at large to sort of have their say on what on, on in the investigation of the crime and what the sort of criminal's punishment, as it were, would be. I don't think in an anarchist world there'd be prisons or a police force like we know now. There'll be no war because everyone's able to get what they need. So you won't have war, which is what war is over, is about resources of land. Things like call centres, nothing like that would exist. Uh, big shops where you just are wasteful technology and resources and food and everything will go and education would be sort of the children be more part of it and children be able to teach other children different things as well you know when i was in school it was you know i was raised with this mindset that you have to be good in school you have to be good if you're not then you're going to fail you're going to fail at life if education was structured differently then perhaps i think people might be more open to ideas in later life i think humans are social creatures um, I don't think there is much to our nature in that I don't think we're naturally like competitive and individualistic or uh, selfish thing. I think that's something that capitalism creates. If you're talking natural and kind of the animal kingdom, it really depends on uh, different species. But I think uh, one thing that is clear from the animals as well is the importance of cooperation and mutual aid because there's no species that will survive long enough to evolve into anything if members of that species are constantly screwing each other over. Mandatory imposition of authority certainly isn't a natural thing for humans. It's not how we choose to spend our time. We think it needs to be a society that is as free and equal as possible. I have quite a nice image of like what an anarchist society would look like. Um, I think you'd be able to go anywhere as well, like people would be able to travel a lot more easily because you have nowhere to come back, like you don't need to come back for a job or anything like that. Be able to travel anywhere in the world and know that you have somewhere to stay, you'll have food, there'll be work for you there. And it doesn't mean like you have to fly there, you can take time to get there as well. You can go and travel on your way and visit different cultures and find out what people are up to. And from that, you're gonna have better understanding of different cultures as well. So better communication, better understanding. Um, yeah, it's a nice image if we ever get there. I see the future being hopeful because some might say that it's the natural progression of civilization. But I, 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 I am scared about what's going to happen in the meantime.